Hey everyone, it's Microwave Sim. I'll show you how to dual boot Windows 7 and Ubuntu. First thing you want to do is go to Start, right click Computer, and hit Manage. Afterwards, Computer Management will pop up, and you want to go to Disk Management, which is underneath Storage. Disk Management contains all the partitions of your main local disk drive, or your hard drive. And you can see that the main drive is normally C drive, this case, it's also for me. I'll right click on the C drive and then I'm going to hit shrink volume because you want to shrink the volume to have the space for Ubuntu. Basically I'm just creating a new partition for Ubuntu. Now Ubuntu requires at least 5.9 gigabytes of space. When you hit shrink volume, it'll query shrink space. See how much space is available for shrinking. Now after waiting, this kind of takes for me about 30 seconds, it'll be probably much quicker for you. But my computer was slow today, my laptop. So, we're just going to wait a little while for this to load up. Now you'll see, enter the amount of space to shrink in megabytes. Now. I'll just put in 10240 for approximately 10 gigs of space and then hit shrink. Now you, you can have any amount of space you want. Just remember you want at least 5.9 gigabytes. Normally if you have a lot of space I would just say maybe 100 gigs. But I'm just showing it as a demonstration. 10 gigabytes. What will happen now is it's going to shrink the size, create a new partition of unallocated space, and then pop up on the disk manager. So, take, okay, right there, 10 gigabytes unallocated. And then I can just close out of this. Now, once that's done, all you need is a USB Ubuntu bootable drive or a Ubuntu disk. So I already created an Ubuntu USB bootable drive. And now I'm going to turn on my computer and set up um, by pressing F2 once the BIOS shows up. F2 or F10 to get into the BIOS setup or the boot setup. And in this setup utility, you can change the boot order so that you can boot either USB flash drives or disk drives first. Now, under this laptop, it's underneath System Configurations, Boot Options, and then I'll go to Boot Order at the bottom. Now, I'll bring USB diskette on key slash USB hard disk all the way to the top so that I can boot my USB flash drive before. Uh, it boots the hard drive. So afterwards I'll save my changes by pressing F10. And it will just restart my computer. Now when it restarts my computer I can boot into my USB flash drive. Sometimes it does it automatically sometimes you have to hit a key to boot it. But in this case for me it was automatic. Now Ubuntu, I'm using a version 13.10. I have a tutorial for making a USB bootable Ubuntu stick. If you want to check that out, just go to my channel. But I decided to skip it so that um, for people who are, are prepared, who have this Ubuntu stick already, can just keep on going. Now after it loads up, you can hit install Ubuntu. Okay, so I'll click this. And now, it says for best results, blah, blah, blah. Sure that this computer, 5.9 gigabytes. Just click continue. Then for wireless, just click continue. We don't really need Wi-Fi network right now. And once that's done, you can hit something else. Now installation type you want to hit something else and then go to continue. Basically what something else is 
it'll allow you to have like manual manual installation with um, the partition table. Now it'll show all the partitions of your local uh, hard drive, and you can see everything's underneath slash dev slash sda. There'll be a number of partitions depending on how many you have. But for me, I have four partitions: sda one to four. Now, for these partitions, you can also see the free unallocated space, which is you know the 10 gigabytes that I set in the beginning of the video. And for some reason, it says unusable for me. And the reason it says unusable is because in this partition table, it only allows you to have four different parti partitions at a time. Now, it has SDA 1 to 4. So I'm going to have to delete one of these partitions so that, so that I can dual boot. Um, so basically, I see SDA 4, a FAT32 with approximately 100 megabytes of space. And let me just double check to see if it's important on this list I have in hand. Um, it's on my bed. Okay, so I don't think that's important for me. I can just, what I'm going to do is I'm going to click SDA4 FAT32 and then click minus. The minus will make it into free space and it should work. Now I skipped the step um, because I was experimenting but basically I hit um, the free space on that 100 megabytes, clicked minus on it, you can see plus or minus and then it turned into free space and now I can create new partitions. Now I just clicked um, the 100, no it, it was 10 gigabytes, yeah, the 10 gigabyte um, free space, clicked on it and then press the plus button so I could create a partition. Now let me just look at my notes a little bit. Okay, so what I need to do now is make the size, okay. Type of for the new partition will be primary. And location for new partition beginning of this space is alright. Use as X EXT for journaling file system. And now I am going to make this let's see, how much should I make it? Only requires 5.9. So I'll make the partition with about 8.5 8 8.3 gigabytes around that. Because what you need to do actually nine. Nine sounds about right, yeah. Nine point three or so gigabytes. The mount point will be just a slash back um, you know, then press OK. Basically I did not use the entire um size because you want to leave some space for swap area what a swap area is is basically a bootloader so that a menu so that you can select between Windows 7 and Ubuntu now I've read some details about how much you should leave for swap size and they say it's a general rule just have at least maybe 256 megabytes uh, but some people say twice the amount of your RAM but I mean you can just have it anything you want now basically again the four partition rule I had to change my SDA 3 and then you can see I just press minus to make it into free space now let's see I'll even though I have 16 gigs of free space left to create a swap partition uh, swap area basically you want to just go to use as swap area now I'll set it to just two um, gigabytes approximately you want the type for the new partition to be logical and location to be beginning of the space press OK I made it two gigabytes because I think that's uh, sufficient you know even though they say some people say twice the size of your RAM that was back then um, now you can just click on that 9 gigabyte thing and then install now, install Ubuntu. I just uh, created the swap area for 2 gigabytes because you know you don't need too much for the swap area but more, I don't know if more helps but it seems to maybe have an effect if you 
do a little bit more. So I just did two gigabytes. Uh, since it's a 700 gigabyte hard drive, it's nothing big. It's a little bit set up. And now I'll just skip ahead so that you can see, you know, you don't want to see me set up Ubuntu. Okay, so now installation is complete. I will start now. And I will just see, I'll, I'll just show you the final result basically. I'll show you what um, it looks like at the end and show that everything is working. So, computer boots up. You can see Ubuntu or Windows 7 in this GNU grub. So, if I go to Ubuntu, Ubuntu loads up. I'll just show briefly. By this point, if you've watched the video, then you're basically done, but I'm just going to show that, hey, it works. Okay. Hmm. <laughs> a little bit awkward because you can see my reflection. I'm just looking at myself right now. It's a bit awkward. I was just using my phone to record. And you can see Ubuntu loads. And now you can restart your computer. I'll show you Windows 7 works now. Just going to restart. And now I'll select Windows 7 loader. Okay, starting Windows, Windows 7. Hmm, okay, so it starts to load and preparing to configure an update. I'll just skip this update and then I'll show you the final result. Okay, so now you can see I've just booted up to Windows 7. Skipped ahead a little. Thanks for watching, everyone.